It's the Brand Amplification Podcast with your hosts, Ben, Dave, and Adam. Welcome back. The recipe is so complex. Like, oh, I can buy this guy's pedal, but the only electric instrument that has someone's fingers touching it, unlike synths and all the cool sounds. So it just makes stuff so magical and so much personality because you can't really duplicate everything in his. And I, you know, I think that it, the intention in the beginning, I think was to try to emulate the human voice. And I think for me, that's always been kind of what I'm trying to, to, to mimic is, you know, some of my favorite singers. Yeah. Even uh, what Derek trucks. Yeah. It's why he sounds so musical. He goes, I just copied what soul singers, like their yeah. runs as opposed to doing, learning the scales and the, all of that type of thing, which is really interesting. But I think that's what drew me to electric guitar because I always wondered that. I love good melodies. And I love making records and I love beats and I love all these things, but there's something so emotional combining uh, flesh and machine. Yeah. I think it's a Land Wall record, actually. I think he calls it like flesh and machine. So we were listening to uh, Pink Floyd. Yeah. Right before yeah. we push record and talking about um, the electric guitar, and I, w- I was saying how visceral the emotional response is yeah. from somebody that could pick up an instrument like that, play it through pedals, amps, you know, tubes, you know, cables, the whole thing, and and create this immensely visceral response from the human body. And we're saying how interesting that is as opposed to so many, you know, electronic instruments that exist today, synthesizers. And and you don't see the visceral reaction because uh, you, you, play, you play guitar, and, uh, but you're a front guy, songwriter, drummer as well. But it's not like you're an electric guitar no, nerd. I, I mean, it, there, you know, there isn't that factor. And I mean, I could be wrong here. I feel like electric guitar players are one of the few instrumentalists or someone who has, who does not play that instrument is way into different electric guitar players. Like you can have mm. massive fans of, you know, Eddie Van Halen or Jimi Hendrix. They don't play guitar. Right. And it's not even about the words, but they just love it. Rage Against the Machine, Tom Morello, you know, one note riff, an octave riff for Bulls on Parade. And it's so visceral that people who don't play guitar, they're not nerds about guitar. They still are so attached to it. Yeah. We were, we were talking about the T4 and I was talking about the reasons why I was going for this kind of singing, you know, endless sustained guitar sound for, for leads. And so I was referencing, you know, the time solo or the comfortably numb solo and where David Gilmore just, you know, the, the, the amount of feeling that I get from hearing him, you know, play some of those beautiful solos. That's what I was after in the T4 is that sound. And that sound was a combination of so many things, um, but I was trying to get something on my pedal board that would let me go there by pushing a button. Yeah, get that same feel. Yeah, as what those records were giving. Which I, uh, I've had, I've been asking you just about the history of fuzz because I didn't grow up playing with fuzzes, especially growing up playing in more um, CCM or church settings. Mm-hmm. There's not a, a big, you know, call for fuzz. Unfortunately, and I, unfortunately, but the word itself. Uh, when I first heard those records and those solos, I wouldn't have thought fuzz pedal mm. because I fuzz just evokes something in my head that makes me think not necessarily that. And then for years, you've been getting me into fuzz pedals and showing me different tracks that kind of blew my mind because it's not what I would have thought. I'd be like, I don't need a fuzz pedal. And then you listen to something like that. I'm like, well, that's what I was going for. Mm. I guess I need a fuzz then because I wouldn't have associated those two things together. That beauty. Yeah. But it's because I didn't grow up listening to that stuff, sadly, you know. But I do now, and I just wouldn't have made that connection. So if any of you are not, um, did not grow up knowing all that stuff, you still need a fuzz to do really pretty, beautiful <laughs> things, I guess. Yeah, we posted uh, on on our Instagram a while ago um, a, a track that James Duke sent me that he said, "This is the T4 playing this solo." And you know, when I first listened to that, I was like, "He he gets it." He, this is why I made this pedal. He gets it. You know, um, Nick Mayer sent me something the other day or posted something the other day, a live thing. 
he's like, this is the T4. And it's, it's just that sound. He gets it. And I love it. I love it when you, you know, when you make something and then you hear somebody using it and you're like, oh, that is exactly what I was after. And I love that James Solo was on a worship record. Absolutely. It I definitely has a place. You know, it definitely has a place in pop. And it's been used a ton in pop. Um, but I, I don't know that people always know that that's what it is. And sometimes something with the nastiest tone can have such a unique voice. But that's not what the T4 was not meant to be. It was meant to be beautiful. And I think that's what you were saying, Adam, is T4 is just has bad marketing. Maybe. But I think fuzz, fuzz, fuzz pedals. pedals fuzz pe- sorry, yeah. not the T4. Uh, yeah, fuzz pedals. And maybe the T4 maybe has the T4. no marketing? Because the T4 has no marketing. The uh, Well, in the last podcast, we were talking about how some words sound like what they are. Flubby <laughs> tone. You're like, oh, you know. Words just have that response. And fuzz to me has, it just has a feel I associate with it. Um, that is very high gain. And I love that stuff as well. Or, you know, very riffy. I don't, I'm trying to think of something. But... I don't associate it because of the name with some of these really beautiful things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. You think of the intro riff to satisfaction. Yeah. I which think sounds like a fuzz. That that's what I think of. It kind of really bad in the best way. Yeah. Like something's breaking, but we're gonna keep playing and it's awesome. Like yeah. that's and I love those pedals too. Yes, they are Actually, yeah, I love those as well. I don't know what I was going to say there, but the the that Norman Greenbaum "Spirit in the Sky," I mean, that's just the nastiest guitar sound ever, and I love it so much. I think I know why we don't use fuzzes. The younger generation doesn't use fuzzes. I think it has to do with in ears, because when you can mix your own in ears, you put yourself, you tend to put yourself above the rest of the band, which is not good because it affects the types of parts you play and all this stuff. And when everyone was just playing open, you kind of hear this full sonic spectrum of what the fuzz is doing in the room and around, and it's magical. And then if you're plugging into a little amp that's backlined, listening to it through in ears, and it's clean, and you hear yourself 10 dB above everyone else in the mix, you just kind of go, oh, no, not no, not that. But if you really have to have the right fuzz pedal to play it through a clean amp, a lot of my favorite fuzz pedals sound horrible into an amp that's pristinely clean. If that amp's not clipping at all, just even just a little it. bit or how much it so it so it actually it needs to hit something that would soften the edges. Well, we were we were just talking about all the stages that something goes through before it gets to your speakers. Like if you're recording a sound, you know, from the speakers to the tubes to the mic to the the preamps and all those things, like to have a fuzz pedal that works through a clean amp, um, it's a very specific kind of a thing. And I like the T4 um, before the protein, actually, because as you were saying that, I was thinking about it. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you show up and play through backline. I'm just trying to get a good, clean platform. If I can just get a good, full sounding, clean tone for most of the artists I play with, that's great. And then the protein was meant to, you know, help that sound better and kind of give me this flexible overdrive thing. But if fuzz pedals don't sound good with clean amps, that was probably why I never loved playing them, especially through backline. But when I put the T4 before the protein uh, with the green side, like the, the drive almost all the way off, I liked it the best. And maybe because it was softening. Yeah. Uh, which the T4 doesn't need it. But uh, even some of the other fuzzes I have, it did seem to need that before it sounded good, I guess, because my amps are clean. It's soft, it softens it up a bit. If you, you know, if you play it through a, uh, you know, an, a tweed amp or a Marshall that's clipping a fair bit, you know, it it takes and, um, you know, it softens it up. We need to not get too, Nobody too, lets us too crank far down the rabbit hole of ears. what's actually happening What's there, actually but, happening. So, so it's just a So you have problem. the waveform of the clipping on the amp, and then you have the wave. <laughs> so, um, so talk a little bit about, I mean, the protein obviously was the original kind of brand amplification um, pedal that was released. Yeah, it was our first release. Yeah, so why why was the T4 the next decision in the process of your thinking? Was it just because it was just the easiest thing to, you know, throw, throw it against the wall? Can we cast lots? <laughs> I think. <laughs> no, um, my friend Josh from JHS Pedals actually came up to me at church when I was playing guitar and said, what is that? And I said, oh, it's a, you know, it's, it's this, you know, highly modified Big Muff that, 
you know, I love. And he said, you need to release that. And I was like, the world does not need another fuzz pedal. And he's like, yes, they do. They need that. So They need your fuzz pedal. Yeah, it's all Josh's fault. And so, yeah, so we can blame you, Josh, for uh, for the release of the TIFO pedal. So tell me uh, a little bit about why is this particular pedal different than, you know, there's a ton of, literally a ton of fuzz pedals on the market. And- I actually own one ton of fuzz pedals. <laughs> exactly I one ton. I love fuzz pedals. Yeah, and so obviously creating your own version of that, you know, you're saying the world doesn't need another, but what was it that particularly made you kind of go, I need to fix this aspect of the T4 uh, to make it feel different than other things that are on the market? Well, we were talking about this a while ago. Like you have something that sounds amazing in your room, but then you go try to use it live and it disappears or, you you know, it's harsh or whatever thing it does in the live setting that it no longer translates what you were hearing when you were working on your sound. And and so it's no longer being a helpful tool. It's now a hindrance. And so um, my favorite Big Muff that I had, which I don't have anymore. It's really sad. I sold it. Oh, that was sad. I could get that back. Um, it just didn't work live. It wouldn't translate. And so I you know, started playing with gain structures and where the mid range was sitting and how much low end it had and where, where you cut the low end and where you let the clipping happen and how much clipping. And, you know, so it it was just kind of stage by stage. The the T4 is a four transistor fuzz and each stage has a lot going on and you can really play with it. I, you know, I, as I started digging into releasing that pedal, I, I started finding, um, I want to say hundreds, that might be a slight exaggeration, but I probably have almost a hundred hand-drawn schematics as I was going through playing with the big muff circuit (laughs) because that's how big of a dork I am. Um, just different variants and what I liked and, you know, that was a really long answer. No, that's fine. That's fine. I, I know. Continue if, on. If I, we don't want to give away the secrets, but I saw no. the stack of papers one time, and it, it is definitely a a folder thick, and they look so cool. Because I'm like, can we scan these and like turn these into posters? Like, no, that wouldn't be a great idea. But it, there's there's a thick inch stack of designs. Uh, so I had, do have people that email me asking questions about different things. Uh, one of the questions I do have from people around the T4 is is it usable for the bass? Oh, guitar? I love it on bass. I mean, I love big muffs on bass. Um, yeah, I mean, d- didn't we post something recently? Yeah, we did. I've actually used it on bass a fair bit. And um, the thing that you talked about with the mid-range is what made it really usable for me because, like, you know, that scoop thing can get lost in the mix. And I was using it for recording, so obviously I could have tried to Artific, you know, later put the mm-hmm. mids back in, but it just sat so well because I didn't lose all of that really nice mid range in the bass, which is you know what you want with an old P bass or a jazz bass, and yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. So in a pedal board environment, where is the optimal place to put a pedal like the T4? Boy, I've run it. Um, before my overdrives and I've run it after my overdrives and I like it both ways for different reasons. Um, the way my current board is set up, um, my T4 is after my overdrives. Um, Tell but me I, why. actually, I think it's before the, um, the Hudson broadcast. Oh I yeah. Think. Because the Hudson broadcast has a, a transformer in it that really, sounds amazing and softens things up. And so if I turn that on and then run the fuzz into that, I kind of get this old fuzz direct into a console kind of a sound that's really, really cool. But for me, um, running the, a lot of it has to do with where your settings are. So if you're, if you're clipping your overdrive or you're running your overdrive with a lot of clipping, a lot of gain up, and then you run the T4 into it, it's kind of going to get mushy. 
if you're running the blue really clean and you hit it with kind of a medium gain T4, that's a really magical sound. So the T4 first into the blue side of the protein is a really, especially if you're playing a super clean amp, you can kind of get, you can kind of mimic some of the, you know, amp with a little bit of clipping by running that blue side just lightly clipped. And that's a really cool sound. Um, but I have it last because I like to boost the T4 with the blue side of the protein because then it just sounds like um, the world is ending. <laughs> yeah, where do you run your gain on the T4 when you're boosting it with the blue side? Um, you're like like low gain on the T4 no, and then smashing it? or like Probably a little above half, maybe almost two-thirds. I'm going to try that a, today. It's a buzzsaw for sure. It's a buzzsaw? Mm-hmm. But I like that. Well, I, it's it is interesting hearing you talk about it because I I did I never used to understand fuzz pedals, and the whole world of in ears and having to lower the stage volume on everything means you, you I can't crank the amps most of the time. I mean, right. uh, even at the studio, I have my stuff in ISO boxes, and I think I had the one amp. I think it's thirty five watts. The black one has like three different gain things, so it's not a it's not a large amp, but I had it on like two or three. And the guys were like, well, we could hear you were rock rocking out in there. And I just had like the fuzz on. I'm like, how are these guys back in the day cranking those amps to get this sound? Because it's really hard to do these days. Uh, we had a technical malfunction, but we're back. A technical malfeasance. <laughs> yes, exactly. A brain malfunction. <laughs> I have those daily. Uh, it happens sometimes, but that's okay. So the T4, as uh, what we've been talking about, is our brain amps take on the uh, classic four transistor fuzz pedal. Yep. Um, is there anything else you would like to share about your thoughts on such things? If you take the T4 and you turn the gain way down, uh, I've been told by reputable people that it sounds like a fuzz face, which I think is really cool. I mean, it does. It, it kind of copies that I've, old I've thought vibe. that. Is it, what, what would a word be? So like splatty, it gets yeah. that really. It gets splat. I didn't want to say, it, but, you know, it gets splatty. Kind of, kind of, you know, more gatish or something. I don't know what that word would be, but any word you want to use is okay. <laughs> That's right. I don't know, man. I don't want to get canceled. Uh, and I know, well, I know you. I've heard you guys say this before, but I think that's the beauty of the T4 is you can get kind of almost multiple different versions of a fuzz out of the out of that one pedal. Yeah, for sure. And I like the way the way the circuits that you do, the way you build them, and same thing with the protein, is I like having a lot of flexibility without all of the, with as few knobs as possible, because it can just be option overload. And so I don't want 10 clipping diodes and then an order toggle and then 15 other things that if I change one, it's going to change the sound that I had dialed in. I'm not smart enough to do that, and I will just go down a rabbit hole and spend 20 minutes trying to get a sound. And so it's so versatile for having those three knobs, like you said, turning the drive down and it sounds like this and then getting those singing lead things. That's what I like about three knob pedals. <laughs> Adam Adam, and I share something called multiple option disorder where if there's too many choices, we can't make one. <laughs> so we've tried to make all of our pedals really like we want it we get it to where we think it sounds the best and it's, that's where it's set so there's not lots of toggles and switches and functions that um that we don't feel that it needs because for me in a live setting those will really throw me off or even if i'm just trying to dial something in i will just spend so much time trying to hear which setting sounds the best and so we just try to do all that on the front end Take the time on the front end. And, you know, that way it's just the way that we wanted it to be. So you can uh, you can thank Dave and Adam for wasting all of their time so <laughs> that you, dear, <laughs> dear guitar player, uh, do not have to waste your time in life. You just get to play great pedals. Well, I tell my parents, I said, you know, I'm a venture capitalist. I just don't have any money. So my... <laughs> My capital is my time. <laughs> so I invest so many hours in, of time and then you hope it pays off later. And I think some of the reasons that the T4 works live is the lack of options. Meaning because I remember uh, there was an intro I did for a record 
and I was using a fuzz that I think is a really cool fuzz, but it has, I don't know, five, six knobs. Got this really cool sound, and it was perfect. Like, it would just gate, so you couldn't hear anything until I kind of started to play, and it would break open and sustain really nice. I think probably me, Brandon, and uh, Dave spent hours getting that sound. Never did it again live because could not recreate that <laughs> one sound. So I was like, well, I mean, it's cool. It's there for forever, but... It's forever noted ne on, never, in digital form. It's like, don't breathe on that knob because it's not going to sound the and same. And if you would like the NFT of that particular thing, we can, uh, we, you know, you can buy have it, it just in glass in my house. I'm like, never moving it again. That's right. Now, if I ever have that guitar that I've already sold in the exact same amp, I can get that sound again. <laughs> With that one bad cable. With that one bad That's cable. Right. You just got to take a picture of it now and you can sell a picture of it online That's right. for lots and lots of money. I know, what is it with only human, version. we think we want options, but all these people will tell you that options actually stress us out. <laughs> like, don't give me options. Stress me out. Yeah. yeah. Once you have kids, you're like, no, 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 no. Let's reduce the amount of options available here. Because, <laughs> good God, I don't need more stress in my life. Go listen to the guitar solo on the song Time from Pink Floyd and listen to all the noise around that guitar solo and listen to the nasty spitty sound of the guitar but how beautiful the sound is and if you hate it i'm sorry but i think it's amazing <laughs> and honestly you know send us an email and let us know yeah. that you hate <laughs> that you hate it and like you completely disagree with us and that's okay or tell us what your favorite beautiful fuzz solo is yeah i mean there's a there's a lot I, I, you guys are telling me there's a lot of songs that i wouldn't have even known that that was a fuzz pedal being played for that intro line or for that solo. Have you guys got – what's your favorite, Adam? Oh, God. You just put me on the spot. I'm, a, I'm a fuzz novice. <laughs> Don't Probably something – what got me hooked on it, I think, was uh, actually two Daves, Dave Brown and Dave Weens, <laughs> giving me Pink Floyd records. So all of the solos on – well, the one you referenced. And then I can't think of the name of a song, but I think there's one on the Division Bell. Oh, yeah. Uh, is there one where he uses a whammy pedal with a fuzz? Anyway, I, I all of those records me made me want to dive into fuzz. Yeah. Because I that's I always wanted that sound, and I was trying to get them the wrong way. And so you guys kind of opened my eyes to that. But I'm going to come next week with fuzz solos. I'm going <laughs> to go listen. <laughs> I'm going to be prepared. <sighs> There's about a thousand Hendrix solos that would apply. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm trying to think of... Uh, I know there's some like modern current people too. I'm I'm just spacing at the moment, but I'm gonna find them. I need to write songs down when I hear something I like in them. So much time, not enough coffee. Mm. Yeah. Although you do have coffee right in front of you, so yeah. I'm no moving, excuse, no excuses, Adam. I'm moving into an IV drip. So if you guys see that next to me, just a slow drip next yeah, to you. Drip. Well, the T4 is our classic take on uh, a fuzz pedal, and if you do not have one, uh, they are available. Uh, from a bunch of our dealers on our website. You can go to brownamps.com and we do have a dealer page. T4 would be the perfect gateway fuzz. <laughs> so that's kind of what we Because then you know fuzzes say. can be awesome. And then when you find a quirkier one you like, you'll have the patience to figure out how to use it because <laughs> you'll know what's possible. <laughs> that's right. You get it on our website as well as uh, from a bunch of dealers all over the world. And if that's your thing, that's what you're looking for. All right, well, thanks for listening. Uh, this is the Brand Ants Podcast, and we will be back uh, next week. Same time. Some point, maybe not. Maybe not the same, same time. I don't bat know. time, same bat channel.